Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranakhat, West Bengal, India. This is a case of phacomorphic glaucoma. Let us observe this surgery. We can see the cornea is hazy. There is desmet membrane folds and the cornea is not at all clear. I know I am going to have a tough time in this surgery. The patient came to me day before yesterday with intraocular pressure of 60 mm of mercury. Anti-glaucoma medications were started. Today the intraocular pressure is 20 mm of mercury. And the cornea is, peripheral part of the cornea is okay. The, there is corneal folds and corneal edema at the central part. The main incision has been placed. This is stripe and blue dye to stain the anterior capsule. Little bit of adrenaline was administered. And now the anterior chamber is being filled off with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. In this case, my plan is to work far away from the corneal endothelium and use visco at every step and now a side port a side port is being made on the left side of the main incision two and a half claw cords away a 26 case bent needle is taken the central part of the anterior capsule is punctured and a capsular tag is raised. This is called a C-flap. I use a uterator forceps now, convert this C-flap into a small orexis. And now my plan is to aspirate as much cortex as possible so that the anterior chamber becomes deep the anterior chamber is shallow at this moment the anterior chamber becomes deep and the rexis can be done with safety if we do rexis when there is elevations at some areas there is chance of extension to periphery at those areas. Here I could aspirate cortex from inferior part from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. But the cortex at 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock still causing some elevations and the antechamber is shallow in these areas. So I inject visco and now my plan is to apply this. This is BHEX people expander. Now my assistant gave me this fixation forceps but you can see that the blood vessels are already congested and if I use any forceps there will be subconjunctival hemorrhage. Instead I used this Johnson Bart and the leading flange as well as the flange at around 1.30 o'clock has been ducked. Now I go through the side port and tuck the flange which is at around 10 o'clock. And now I inject some more visco. My plan is to always keep the chamber deep 
to protect the corneal endothelium. And now I took uh, the keratome, made a stab incision at 6.30 o'clock and through this I want to aspirate the cortex from 12 o'clock. And once this is done, the chance of rexis run out in these areas are gone. There's some elevation at nine o'clock. So I'm just trying to remove some more cortex. Go through the side port and remove the cortex from nine o'clock. And now I am sure that I can do the rexis very safely. There's no elevation in any place. Visco is injected to fill up the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is deep now. And I take a vana scissor, make a small nick at around six o'clock because this area I can see clearly. And now I enlarge the small rexis into an optimum size rexis. and it is done. Very safely the rexis is done. And now inject some more visco. You can see that the flange at 10 o'clock one notch has disengaged. So I hold the tab, middle tab again and place this flange properly. Yes. And now it is done. And now is the time to introduce the tip of the FECO needle. Here it goes. The FECO needle goes bevel down. Some superficial dense matter is aspirated. The handpiece is then turned to make the bevel up. The cornea is very hazy, visibility is very poor. So I have to do the surgery very slowly and actually I have to use my past experiences. Use a lot of intuition and manage this case. Feco energy, ultrasonic energy used is 60%. Flow rate is 40 ml per minute. Vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury. Bottle height is about 80 centimeter. very hazy cornea. I'm placing the 
deep at the central part I have removed the chopper now I am trying to hold this much yes I could hold it go chop it remove the chopper again as I remove the chopper the lick is through the sideboard stops and followability increases and it is done cortex is not visible but I can see the peripheral part if I tilt the eye I can see there is very minimal cortex however I am going to use the 23G Simcoe very gently I will go just beneath the anterior capsular rim and aspirate the cortex so cortex is being aspirated very gently the B hex is in place through the side port removing the cortex from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock I can see that it is quite clear as I tilt the eye I can see clearly go through the 6.30 o'clock step incision and remove the cortex from 12 o'clock and it is done and now I fill up the capsular bag and the entry chamber with visco enlarge the main wound a bit because there is BHEX and I want to go in and release the intraocular lens beyond the flange which is just in front of the main incision this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens it goes gently into the capsule bag we tilt the eye and check yes I can see the rexis margin and the optic is beyond the rexis margin and now I remove the BHEX pupil expander there is some amount of pigment dispersion now I am using this 23G Simco to remove the visco going behind the intraocular lens irrigating some VSS behind the lens that is in the capsular bag
and now we are almost done we took the bimanual irrigation aspiration did some more irrigation and aspiration to remove the visco and I came out this is a bit of moxifloxacin the sideboard at 130 o'clock is closed by hydrating corneal stroma the sideboard at 630 o'clock doesn't require any hydration this is the final lavage the anterior chamber is nicely formed by this simco and then I take the moxie moxie fluxacin inject a bit of moxie as well as hydrate the main wound and now I uh, inject subconjunctival dexamethasone and conclude the case thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.